High fructose corn syrup and autism. What possibly could be the relationship between the two? This more fear mongering or conjecture or what? Well, there may be a correlation. And the correlation has to be validated again in further studies. However, let's begin with the review of the study. On April 10th, 2012, an article came out, which you probably never heard of in the news, called a macroepigenetic approach to identify factors responsible for the autism epidemic in the United States, published online in the clinical epigenetics. All right, what happened was this. The researchers were trying to figure out why there was such an incredible high rate of autism in the United States, and why within a five-year period of time, between the ages of six and 21, there was a 91% increase in special needs of autistic children. All right, that's a lot higher figure than you've been reported in the news because they believe in the researchers' mind that the government figures may be not as uh, being reported or not as high as they actually are. But follow me. All right, so what happened was this. They looked at basically at autistic children. They recognized that certain treatments uh, for autism or ADHD seem to have showed some promise especially when it came to the gene expression of one gene in particular called paroxinase 1, hence for paroxinase 1 or PON1. And paroxinase 1 is responsible for detoxifying organophosphates and nerve gas and other weird little things like that. It's uh, basically its gene expression triggers in the liver, helps the whole body get rid of a lot of bad junk. So. Recognizing that paroxinase 1 is lower in kids with autism, what in the world could be lowering it? All right, so this is where the research got into play. They needed a control country. And the control country they utilized was Italy because they were speculating at that time since basically Italy had about the same amount of mercury contamination from pollutants, fish, uh, dental amalgams, uh, vaccines, warthamersol, you name it, but yet the autism rates were basically much lower in the United States. They made a good control group because one thing known as isoglucose, which is actually high fructose corn syrup in the European Union, is not utilized hardly at all in Italy. Henceforth, have no high fructose corn syrup, very little autism, if any. So that's what gave the researchers a clue. They looked at the epigenetics, uh, not sorry, epidemiology, not epigenetics. And what they did was this, and this is how it, it came to this conclusion. All right, what they looked at was generally that with high fructose corn syrup consumption in the United States, there was a direct correlation with the rise in autism. Yeah, it's, just, it, it's guilt by association, but how are though, it required a little bit extra um, intuitiveness. And what they discovered, that high fructose corn syrup does something to deplete a few of the minerals which are responsible for detoxification, uh, potentially, uh, or displace, will you like, use that word, zinc, calcium, magnesium. And already the United States is pretty challenged in those levels anyways, because most of our diets in short suck. So what happened was this. They looked at the high fructose corn syrup and they came to four highlights. They found out the calcium, magnesium, and zinc losses or displacement of any of these minerals from the consumption of high fructose corn syrup. Two, the mercury and fructose may both modulate the PON1 activity, peroxidase 1, and not in a good way, obviously lowering that gene expression down. The mercury that may occur from low mercury concentration sometimes found in high fructose corn syrup as a result of the manufacturing process. They're trying to say, well, high fructose corn syrup may be a double-edged sword. It may displace your zinc. At the same time, it's going to add more mercury for you to try to detox if the manufacturers haven't taken it out by now. High fructose corn syrup may further enhance the toxic effects of lead on cognitive and behavioral development in, in children. There's where the guilt may lie. High fructose corn syrup 
through lowering the expression of this very unusual but very important gene called PON1, eliminates or how I should say reduces the body's ability for the liver to detoxify lead, heavy metals, mercury, so on and so forth. So that's where we come to that basically realization that high fructose corn syrup is sweet, but however though, it has a very nasty effect as far as the body's ability to get rid of toxins. But let's continue a little further. All right, they found out that the PON1 uh, basically gene expression played a huge role in the elimination of heavy metals, which also required the, expre the expression, expression means it's working, of methylthionine MT gene, which synthesized the zinc-dependent metal binding protein, methylthionine with dietary zinc loss and copper gain. Yeah, because zinc's required to balance copper. So if your zinc levels go down, your copper levels begin to skyrocket. Not good in many cases. Uh, the gain from the consumption of high fructose corn syrup, metabolic process required to eliminate heavy metals are impaired with children with autism. So, here we go. High fructose corn syrup through displacing zinc and other metals required for detoxification causes peroxidase gene expression to become reduced, meaning it's not working very well. Henceforth, the lead and other heavy metals begin to build in the body and screw with your head. All right, now we go a little further. They found out that mothers of autistic children tend to have this PON1 gene expression uh, much lower than mothers of non-autistic children. And that also, that this PO1 gene expression is obviously required for prenatal development. Henceforth, that's how the kids get affected mentally is through basically, well, the, the epigenetics of the mothers or mother of their mother, so on and so forth. This stuff can go on for generations. So you can, you can mess with the generation. It can have impact three or four generations down the line, if not even further. Henceforth, epigenetics. So they looked at that. And then they looked at other studies in regards to increasing PON, PON1 gene expression. Apologize about saying it so much, but it is important. And this is what they did. They looked at studies, Patel and Curtis found that in addition to glutathione and B12 injections one to three times per week, children with autism and ADHD showed significant improvement in many areas of social interactions, concentration, writing, language, and behavior when fed an organic diet because it's missing the pesticides and stuff that's hard on the liver, low in fructose, high fructose corn syrup, and free of food additives and food colors. Oh yeah, that's a caveat. A lot of your food additives and food colors have traces of mercury in it uh, because of the way they're processed. And also too, keep in mind that also with high fructose corn syrup and uh, basically the possible displacement of zinc, if this study is validated, it also lowers your T3 levels, the thyroid levels, and prenatal development, this also drops the IQ. So it's a double-edged sword in a couple of different ways. And you go, well, why is mercury in high fructose corn syrup allegedly if it is? Well, part of the reason is mercury cell chloroclide chemicals are used by manufacturers because the chemicals are known to enhance product shelf life. So yes, the product lasts on the shelf a lot longer and their shelf life is enhanced. However, our shelf life definitely takes a hit when you're talking about you and I or I and you and you and me. So what you take from it is high fructose corn syrup, mess with what's called macromineral homeostasis, generally throws a whole monkey wrench in the fact that your liver will have a hard time detoxifying because of the lower in PON gene expression. But however though, that could affect even more than just basically mental development. So keep that in mind. Again, the study needs to be validated. The fact that no one has tried to validate it or disprove it in the two years when it came out is kind of disturbing to me. But again, research it, footnote it, then draw your own conclusion. But however though, the researchers from this study came to the assumption that there's a strong correlation between high fructose corn syrup and autism, and that's if their facts ring true. It's Ralph Turchiano, signing off once again. Thank you.